The best team in Dead by Daylight got challenged by a P100 Scar Merchant main claiming that he was going to easily beat them. They accepted the challenge and gave him a match on a map of his choosing. What followed could only be described as incredibly painful to watch. The Scar Merchant main established very early on that all he wants to do is hold a 3 gen, but the efficiency of his build was mind blowing. He used an impossible skill check build that worked wonders for him. His first add on makes of us oblivious, and the second one removes the warning sound for skill checks. The survivors have to look where the Scar Merchant is coming from, but it leaves them open to get surprised by a skill check with no sound. This, together with oppression overcharge, gave him insane gen regression. Without taking too much away from it, I can tell you that this one game showed the critical design flaws of Scar Merchant and how a player could challenge the best of the best with very little. I hope you enjoy. And this is the player. He's using a 3 gen build on Scar Merchant. And he thinks that he can beat Eternal very easily. So let's see if this is true. So we see that is a pretty good forge in on the top side of the Torment Creek. Um, and I think he wants to secure it already, putting up the drones. Yep, he definitely sees that three done. And he wants it. This is around the main building, though. There is the main building vault. We see a few pallets. I think this is going to be extremely hard to hold. And he has trouble putting the drone up. All right, looks like this is the three gen that we want to protect. The question is, can you protect this against Eternal? Oh, he's putting the drone into the basement. Okay, that uh, changes quite a bit. This drone is super, super hard to disarm now. Oh my God. Okay, this might be... This might be extremely hard, but... Well, you need to protect three generators. Currently, he's holding four, and I think this is where he's going to set up. And the question is, can he hold this all the way? Okay, so he secured the parameters. He knows that no one can walk, walk anything. And now he's harassing the other gens. Because he has nothing else to do. Well, that is Zakon Ace and Nightlight getting into the chase now. Going to the corner to the jungle gym. But he's pretty scared about his gen situation. That is a nasty, nasty basement drone. And that... Oh, we saw potential energy. Okay, very interesting. Okay, this is, this might be interesting. So, this is the best team in the world. And is this enough to hold the best team in the world back? That is the question. So, I think one of the drones actually got disarmed a long time ago. And I think someone is actually walking that gen already. Um, but he doesn't seem to be very aware of it. That is interesting. This gen is 90. Is he going back now? Is he going to realize? No. I mean, I guess he only needs to hold three gens, but that fourth gen was pretty juicy and pretty close. But he's about to lose it. I don't know if this is a mistake or if this is intentional. But there's not much happening right now. Um, he's not doing anything, really. Is no one on that gen? Am I tripping? I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm tripping. But that one drone, uh, that one gen does not have a drone. All right, there are two gens left. They're all by the main building, but he's uh, nowhere near, which is quite interesting. He's waiting for the cooldown. Now he can put it back up. But, oh, why is he not protecting the fourth gen? I'm really, really curious about this. And there it goes. We have one gen left. That was uh, kind of easy to protect. He chose not to. Why that is? It's a good question, but... We might be able to ask him afterwards. All right, now the game really starts. So, how far can they go here? All right, that drone gets uh, put back up. The thing is, that middle gen, oof. If you want to work that gen, then you probably will need to have to tank an expose. And uh, that is the oblivious add-on getting value. Dan getting hit early. He doesn't have a drone right now. X. Depression does not get any value. And he's recalling the one drone and putting it on that. That's really good. He's transitioning the drones. So that's how you're supposed to play. And... Throughout this game, Eternal tried a number of strategies and kept switching it up to see what works. Waiting. He's waiting. Alright, this is the... I guess this is the Skull Merchant gameplay. 
And now the question is, what, what are we doing? So I think that kind of realizing now that there's no drone there and there's probably in the basement. The question is, what, what are they going to do about this? They have a lot of time to figure it out and make a strategy. I mean, the, the wind con or the scout merchant is literally to make this game last an hour, I think. I don't think there's a different wind con. Dan kind of misplaying a little bit, running into a bush for a second. And looks like people are going back to attack the general or not. Is there someone in that corner? No. What a riveting experience this is of Dead by Daylight. This is the high level of Scar Merchant and happy days. But what can you do here? This is a really, really strong region. P100 Scar Merchant. I would assume that this is a basement offering and this is intentional. Because uh, the guy decided this map, and the reason for this might be because of the basement location. I could imagine. There's not much happening right now. Oh, Nightlight actually disarmed the drone inside the basement. Well, now he has to go all the way back there. This is the thing. No, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to go back all the way in the basement. Uh... Oh, Zaka kind of getting surprised on that generator. Oh, there's a tiny bit of progress there. This seems to work out. And okay, it has been decided that this is the co gen. And I think the other two are gonna harass the other two gens. Ooh, getting disarmed. Recalling that, he wants uh, the drone on this one. Well, it doesn't. This is. I guess this is what Scar Merchant is all about. But they seem to still be figuring out a way to beat this. They have, I mean, it's like, there's no rush here. This guy's not going to move anywhere. The thing that he can do here is to continuously walk between the gents. But now we see movement. There has been the decision made that the exposed is going to be tanked. And I think this is where you kind of force the hand of the Scar Merchant player. Where he has to actually chase people. Because if they don't care about this power, then yeah. And Zaka has decided he had enough. He's going to work on the main building gen. There's quite a lot of line of sight on that. And that seems to be the gen that they want to attack. And the other two gens are just going to be harassed. Oh, what you look at this. So now everyone is deciding fighting the drones is not worth it. We're going to take the exports. Very interesting. So the gen in the back cannot be attacked that way though. That's the thing. Nightlight has to wait for his drone to go away. Oh, Nightlight fed the skill check. This is gonna be a down and eruption procs. So what are we gonna do here? Is he gonna hook him in the basement? Looks like he's not gonna hook at all. So because everyone is exposed, this is gonna be a hard situation for them to deal with actually. It seems like he doesn't even want to hook uh, Nightlight, though. Interesting. So he just leaves Nightlight slugged in the area. Yeah, fine. I was still putting up his drones. Alright, so the slug has been picked up. I think they have decided to reset the pressure a bit. They didn't get much gen progress so far. Man, what a time to be alive. That a Skull Merchant... And hold three gens against the best team in the world like this. Crazy. And I'm expecting a reset. Yep. Fully reset. Now we're kind of moving back in, I guess. Edward is waiting outside. He's nearly got rid of physics pulse. If he steps in for one microsecond, it's going to refresh, by the way. That's how it works. And we're going for attack on Dan here. Interesting. I wonder how far away the circle of human totem is. Let's go check on the main gen. And it looks like three different drones have been taken. He doesn't have much left. There's only one. And holy, he's just happy to kick every gen in the universe. That is crazy. He's just kicking. I 
kicking, 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 and nothing but kicking. Russian, not. Oh, that is an exposed again. If you let go of the numpad, you will get exposed. Oh, that is Zaka. Oh, he still has a pallet here, though. He, I don't think he is really interested in looping or anything. Oh, so far it's working. We are looking at 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's pretty much close to zero progress on the generators as we speak. And I'm sure he has kicked uh, 50 gens by now. It's kind of interesting how happy he is to just take the 2.5%. Those were missed skill checks on both gens. I don't know, no idea. 10, 12, 12, 12, 12. Going to main. Yes, shield, yes, shield. Yeah, but we, this guy thinks it's a win if you lose like by time. He thinks it's a win. No, it's not. But for him it is. It's a win for survivors though. Listen, we can't do anything like this. What are we supposed to do? We need to just do gens. We need to force grab, I think, somewhere, but I don't know where. No, no, he's, he won't commit to you long enough, like... I'm gonna get the other one on me. Just do it. Just do gens and play with insane comms and we can pop something. He's going to main. He's going I mean, to I mean, main. I, get, I got the drone, I got the drone, I got the drone. Put in the drone on main, put in the drone on main again. You have to do gens. Okay, no, no, he's at wall, like, he's at wall. Uh, so. Commit in for talk, commit in for talk. Commit in for talk. I'm taking off the drone, taking off the drone. I need reset, I need reset on country. I'm taking drone then. Right, so that was a bit of eternal comms. So, I mean, they're not getting uh, much progress as it stands. He is kicking the generators left and right, and it seems like it's pretty much unbeatable as it stands uh, with these gens. And he doesn't even, he didn't even put the uh, drone back into the basement. He didn't really care for it. He's just happy to patrol the gens here. I mean, this guy's P100. I wonder how long he has done this for. Like, actually incredible. Actually, incredible. I mean, it's like, uh, you, you can win doing this. You can win. The game awards you four kills at 60 minutes in. That's how it stands. It's a bit weird how that works, but the survivors actually die after 60 minutes in the game. Yeah, it looks like it's looked like this. They, they are not finding a solution so far. And now it has been decided. Okay, so it looks like, I don't know what Nightlight is doing, but, oh, he's tanking a hit. Oh, interesting. So the way this works is that Nightlight is there to tank a hit for Zaka. And Zaka is doing the generator. Nice. Tank coming through. Now they have to read that. So that's the trade-off. And oppression getting value once again. This is not much going on here, is there? So there's still a lot of time to figure this out. 20 out of 60 minutes. I think I relies on no one missing a skill check, otherwise the progress pretty much gets reset. And looks like no, we're not committing for attack. There is another missed skill check, the overcharge has been missed. There is an add-on in play right here that makes the skill checks a tiny bit harder. Okay, I mean the, now it's looking interesting. So what is going on here? We are kicking the gen once again. I think this relies on everyone hitting skill checks. And if everyone is hitting skill checks, then we're going to get progress on the gens. This gen is this is the most progress we had so far. There's like probably like 15%, I would imagine. Yeah, he's still putting his drones up, which is kind of funny because uh, they don't have much of an effect at all. And yeah, well, the skill check has been missed again. This is making it so hard. A wrench into the machine. Be committing to a hit here. Looks like it. Yep. Alright. I mean, they will need to reset now. 
That's gonna take a while. How much progress are we looking at on this generator? This is 30%, I would imagine. Let's see what the soars are doing. There's a reset coming out. <laughs> Deliverance. Boy, that hard. These are quite interesting parks, not gonna lie. I think, honestly, I, I don't know if Dan ever thought about getting injured. That would probably help him a lot. Ooh, two wrenches being active. This gen is also 15%. Oh, the commit. And this is the fast hook stage. This is actually funny because now Dead Heart, Resilience and Made for the Sub. All of them are getting activated. <laughs> this is actually quite good for the survivors. Well, this gen uh, looking at uh, maybe 25%. Okay. And we are instantly back now with resilience made for this and that had active on Dan. I wonder if this was the tactical down here to activate his parks. It was probably a really smart play. And spin bust. Oh no, the hit tank failed. Zaka getting down and is he gonna hook this? No, he does not want to. Interesting. So I mean, he doesn't get anything from this, if we're being honest. Um, his win con is literally to stall this game for 60 minutes, and I think there's nothing else really. Zaka being back up. I mean, there's no, there's re no real necessity in healing Zaka either, if he's gonna tank the expose. Ooh, Ooh that might be a combat. No, is it? Oh, that was a dead hand tank. Very strong, well played. Good waste of time. We're getting, definitely gonna get progress on this. And we're resetting the drones, what the Skull Merchant just does. Zaka pre-leaving, he's gonna kick that gen, obviously. Very nice, and you see, Pedro and Dan are already back on it. They are, they are. But this one is looking quite interesting, and I think, I think if there are no more misskill checks, we're looking at positive, not positive progress, but any mistake would throw this back to zero. So the question here is, is the best team in the world able to clean, play clean enough to beat this? And that is the Brint Burst. Our merchant wants to commit for the tag. So Nightline and Zaka are healing again. These two are leaving. And two pistons moving again. Delaying the kick. Interesting, interesting. Oh, so the Sky Merchant understood that no one is doing anything, and you might as well yeah, go for it down here. Okay. I mean, this doesn't do much, though. Because uh, Dan can just heal up, and um, it doesn't matter if he's full health or not. And Dan is gonna go around to... to uh, pick Pedro up, and then uh, they're back at it. It's actually quite funny how everything is so... In insignificant in this. The only thing that literally, the only thing that matters is 60 minutes timer. Do we reach it or not? Can they hold? Or is he gonna get one hook stage? So right now we're looking at 28 minutes in game. They are both in there. Do they commit this again? Can they force locker? He wants to go there. No, he doesn't make it. Passing Locker wastes a little bit more time. Not that much, but a tiny bit. Eruption kinda... Ooh, all right, he understood that Zaka does not have a body block right now. That's not much progress on this. Damn. Not much progress at all. And those deaths looks like they kinda threw us back to like the 10% again. My god. And forcing locker. Waste a tiny bit more time in case the slug is coming in. The thing is, this is Dan's second hook stage. At this point, he needs to be careful. If he dies one more time, then it's all over. But they can definitely tank hits for each other. But they don't really get anything for this hook stage. There's no gen progress really being made. 
This is uh, very inspiring, I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely not the right kind of inspiring. That gen is literally zeroed. Oh, okay, yeah, apparently not. You can still kick it. There's a tiny bit of progress on there. Kick the jet. Kick the jet. Okay, they have decided to switch up the strategy a little bit. Nightlight is working the main gen that currently doesn't have a drone. I don't know if he realizes. He could put one there. Is he not going to abuse the fact that Zaka lost his hit tanker? No, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like he's happy to just kick the generators. Meanwhile, every single gen is getting split right now. And uh, the skill check while leaving the gen. Very unlucky. No, there was oppression actually. Oppression being missed. Damn, were, those were a lot of missed skill checks, but look at this generator. Hey, that is about 40% now. Blastmine coming on top of that. And another missed skill, skill check. There's a lot of blowing up right now. Going back to the, that gen. Yep. Nothing surprising happening. And the thing is, the Scar Merchant player is not forcing Zaka to use the Spin Burst. I'm sure he's walking away. He's not sprinting. And in case he ever wants to commit, the Spin Burst is going to be active. And I think this might be the start of the downfall. Ooh, all right. Nightlight is also exposed, by the way. Okay, interesting. It looks like... It almost looks like we're... Uh, there's another change. They are tripling one gen and soloing the other. I, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening right now. This is another commit? I think it is. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And Nidler is going down. Your option activates. And he can also commit Zaka too, and he knows this. Probably. Does he want to kick his gen or he wants to commit Zaka? That's honestly pretty smart. He has nowhere to go. He uh, decides to die in the corner too. Well, someone will need to rotate over. There's not much progress at all. Yeah, it's kind of funny how this guy mentioned can give the best team in the world a fight with such a simple strategy with kicking gents for millions of hours oh forcing locker nice no he doesn't want to pick the locker interesting He's scared of the generator. I don't think there's much progress. I think he could have definitely gone for that, but it's okay. He's playing it safe. And he's like, it doesn't matter when he's just playing for 60 minutes. Oh, well, this shit is like 30%. We're kicking it. All right, at this point, four people. Everyone is exposed. We're trying to ignore the killer power as best as possible. Oh, okay. This is going to be interesting. So this is this, the one push. No skill check failed so far. No, he can't. He cannot commit this. And we're kicking and we're kicking. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright. Oh. Since Dan is Deathhook, the Nia. There is protection in order, but uh, Nia can quickly pick the Adam back up. But this is such a reset though. Every time this happens, there's so much loss when it comes to generator progress. This gen is maybe 40%. There was no, at no time within the first 40 minutes, the gen was over 50%. That just did not happen. Ooh. Oh, <gasps> that is a mistake. I mean, he's running the oblivious add-on. These mistakes will happen. That's just part of the problem. And he does not care for Adam. He's going straight back to his generator. I'm very progress now. That is pretty much nothing. That's 5% at most. Oh, he wants the Nia. The thing is, 
This Nia has made for this. And the hit tank is coming through. No eruption right now. And yeah, he's not gonna come at this. So that is really smart. But it's it's actually it's really hurting that he created a weak link here. And wow, these people are definitely gonna die. There's nowhere to go here. No, we're not committing. He thought about it for a second, but seemed too risky. I mean there's like no pause, so you can't even kick the he wanted to kick it, but he can't. Because it's zero. The shit is also close to zero. We're looking at 40 minutes into the game at this point. And close to nothing being done. The same thing is happening over and over again. The thing about Dan is he's death hook. He needs to be so careful. He needs to pre-run all the time. If Dan dies, it's all over. <gasps> oh my god, Dan. Hit tank is coming through, though. That was a bit too close for comfort. Oh, would you look at this? We're cutting off the Jake. The Jake doesn't make it anywhere. He's going to go down to... This is trouble. This is massive trouble. So there are two people stuck right now. And at this point, uh, the Skull Merchant can do whatever they want. There's no pressure on anyone. Saka's not pre-running early enough. Actually, wow. He doesn't want to commit that. Interesting. There's no eruption on the gens as of right now. He needs to kick them again. And oppression failed on both generate That hurts so much. Oppression got missed on both gens. And overcharge got missed on that one. Which pretty much means that there's zero progress. And now eruption is back on all three generators. Okay, no, I'm not there. Kicking, kicking, kicking. Double gens, double gens. I have lost mine now. Kicked. Go in 10, go in 10, go in 10. My go, no, full 10, full 10, full 10. It seems like Eternal have still not lost their spirit, which is honestly amazing. Amazing to hear. Because we've been in this game for 45 minutes now. So in 15 minutes, the server's gonna close. And all the survivors are gonna die. If you count this as a victory for the Sky Mansion, it's another story, but... Um, the survivors have a death icon. That's how it stands. Oppression. Being missed on the main gen. Overcommitting, overcommitting. Two bodgens, two bodgens, two bodgens. Kicking, kicking. Skill check, skill check. No, he used oppression. It's 80 seconds, bro. 10, 10, 10, 10. Main, 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 main. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I'm doing my gen, I'm doing my gen. 10, 10, 50, 10, 50. Kick my gen, kick my gen, kick my gen. 10 is 50, they said. So there's a gen at 50. That is interesting. They're kicking again. That's a lot of kicking. Alright, it seems like we're getting progress, and that is progress. Alright, so the gens are slowly getting progress. There's the thing, the scourge has not won yet. And this almost looks like a nothing. There's like three gens on 50% right now. The split pressure is working out really well. Oh, look at the main building, gen. This is 70% at this point. And oppression has a long cooldown. <gasps> no, he's not getting caught off guard. He's trying to surprise with rotations. Looks like he isn't though. Ooh, Dan is in trouble. Hit tank needs to come through. Yes. Oh, there's still a lot of progress here. Oh, this eruption is going to be a throwback. How's this look? Does he commit this? No, he doesn't. This is a very high progress gen. <laughs> Also, the gen kicks are coming through, but... Oh, he's faking the rotation. It doesn't work, though. He... Oh! No, they're not falling for it. This is accident teamwork. They call out perfectly, and I think at this point... It almost looks like this is not holdable anymore. Unless a miracle happens. There are so many gens high progress now. This gen looks like 70%. Oh, a skill check missed, and he's trying to catch the knee off guard. Is he gonna do it, though? This gen is very high progress. All three are. And the blast mine coming through. This is gonna break his this is gonna break it, isn't it? So oppression is still on the cooldown. The ace is getting left alone in the corner. That gen has to be extremely high progress right now. He's coming back. How much how much is it? This is looking at 80%. Yep, and uh, this is where it all falls apart. This game has been going on, on for over 50 minutes at this point. And the final gen kicks are coming through. He's just kicking the gens. Kick it, kick it, hit it. <laughs> kick faster. They're coming. Ooh, Zaka's not getting the call out. No, that's a down. 
No, Sprinter's coming in through. Baiting the rotation. Any force of the locker? Can you do anything? No, Revolution comes through on the generators. But... Wow, they're still insanely high progress. Is it gonna pop? No, the gen is gonna pop. The gen lock has been broken. And at this point, this is emotional damage. But on the scoreboard, we have two hook stages. And uh, this is gonna be the third one in total. I mean, it took a while, but it seems like it has barely, barely won. Barely, barely pulled through for Eternal. And now we are rotating the access gates. What an incredible show of awful game design. Now this is the this is where Eternal is back in the element and they're probably literally not gonna lose anything. It's kind of funny, it looks like he wants to hold the exit gates now. Play for time at all costs. And the Nia is kind of delaying here a little bit. We are looking at mate for this and... Oh, all right, the Adam will not make it out, but that is a respected result. Uh, one... Oh, they might want to save this. I don't think Eternal is happy. Yeah, well, okay. This hook is so close. He could have gone to basement. That is an interesting choice to stay in this area. But I think Eternal is uh, wanting to uh, get the foreman out here. They spend a lot of time in this game. Might as well spend one more minute and get Nightlight off this hook. And we will probably see a textbook 2 one save here. There's nothing that can be done. And uh, the Jack is going to just leave. The Nia gets it. She's gonna leave. The only one left is the Adam, which is also just gonna leave. And at this point, everyone is just gone and the game is over. All right, the <laughs> survivors are very happy about this. Well, GG's all around. Oh See? my fucking god, bro. Oh, oh my god. How long? The, the hand that was so long. 55, 55 minutes. 55 we minutes. Almost, we, almost we almost lost.